Hello my viewers and welcome to this exciting lesson in Advanced Steel. In this lesson, I'm going to teach you on how you can create the floor beams. So as you can see here, we have those beams at that level, okay? And these are the beams that we are going to create in this lesson from start to finish. So make sure that you watch this tutorial from start to finish. And the tool that we are going to use is the UCS. We are going to make use of the UCS for us to create the floor beams at that particular level. And this is the method that you can use to create any member at any particular level. Just move the UCS at that level and I'll show you on how you can do it. Make sure that you watch from start to finish, okay? And as you watch my videos on my channel, please make sure that you like my videos and also if you haven't subscribed, subscribe to my channel. That way you motivate me to do more and more tutorials. Now, apart from the UCS, you also see how you can group, you know, elements within the model there so that you group them, isolate them, so that it helps you to work in the most efficient way. And you see that this is the group that we have. You, I'll show you on how you can make use of the group, okay? So let me also make mention that uh, what you are seeing here is what you are going to create, as I've already mentioned. And for anyone who would like to learn other softwares apart from advanced still in a course like Revit Structure and Robo Structure Analysis and also Revit Architecture, make sure that you check the links in the description. Check them the links, check them out. You might be interested of what I've created within the courses there. Okay, so without wasting much of your time, let's get started in this tutorial. So what I'm going to do, I'll just go to the frame where we'll be creating our floor beams, as you can see from here. Now the frame that you are seeing here, all the connections are there, the cladding is there, the bases are there. This frame is the one which we created in this tutorial on the card above. So if you want to learn on how you can create such a frame with all the connections and the cladding, Make sure that you click the link there. Once you watch this video, of course, then you can learn also on how you can do what we did in this video. Okay, so the first thing that we are going to do is for us to isolate the, mem the members that we want to see so that it's easy for us to work and also maneuver around within the model. So I'm going to make use of the group. First of all, I'll just orbit by just holding the shift and holding the, 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 the wheel on my mouse like that. Then I'll go to the group. Let me first delete this group because I don't need it. I want to show you on how you can create the group. So to create a group, just go up there. Okay. You under the, of course, this toolbar is coming as a result of clicking the project browser there. Then it will appear here. Then once you do that, you have the group set, but there's nothing under the group. So you can go on top under create new group or just right click there and click new group. You can rename it. I'll just add one there and click OK. We have the group there. Now just go to the group, right click and click on add elements. Then I'll just pick the bottom one and click the top one so that I cover what I want to be part of the group. OK, then just click there. You see that I've selected what I want to be part of the group. Then right click to enter, you know, the selection. Then if I turn on the the, the, the bulb there, you see that I've isolated the members that I want to see as I create my floor beams. Okay, so that is the first step. All right. So once you do that now, start now, now move your UCS. You see that this is the UCS. The origin is right there. Now I just want to move the UCS to the level where I want to create my floor beams. To do that, just type UCS on your keyboard or go to the advanced tool palette and click on UCS, then you have the tool there, move UCS, click on it. You see that I'm able to move my UCS, it's being locked to the XYZ. If you don't want to be locked, you can click there, down there, the, the author mode or F8 on your keyboard, you're able to move it like that. I'll just use F8 so that I lock it to Z, okay? Then I'll just type uh, 2700 because that's where I want my floor beam to be. So the origin has moved from that point up to that point right there. Now to start creating your floor beams, of course, you can, you can use this method. You can go to maybe to objects, then you have the eye sections there. You can expand it there. That is the section that I want. I can pick it. 
And if you, you see that it's asking me where I need to start from, I told you that the origin is right there. So you can just type 0, 0, 0, enter. You see that that is the origin. Then you can pick the other end there so that you see where now. The challenge with this method is that there will be a number of snaps there. Of course, you can override the snap there if you want. And maybe just click there, you see that it has picked. Okay. So now, there is a, a better method that I want to show you. Instead of doing that, I'll just escape. Escape from my keyboard, select this member and delete. Okay. There's something that I need to turn on after you move the UCS. Go down there under the quick views and we have the tool there called 10 to D snaps on and off. Just select on it. Okay. It says that to D snaps off. So just click on it to make sure that it's on from there. Okay. Once you do that, now go down here the, like, these are some other settings that i need to do just click under the settings there and i just want to deactivate everything and just leave the the node okay and remove that one and that one you can continue the way i was doing it but you are going to have a lot of snaps there which will disturb your modeling so i just want to turn on the node only click ok then i've turned on that one the 2d snaps on and off in this case it's on okay then if I go to if I go to the, the I section there, I select on it, you see that I will just be picking from the base there and you can see the node there on top is telling me that that's where the beam will be. That way it will be easier for you because we're just able to, you know, to pick that one, you see it will jump on top there. Go to the other one and make sure that you pick the node in the middle there you see that the beam will be on top there. So you see some of these tactics are the ones which are going to separate the, you know, the professionals and the amateurs when it comes to using advanced steel. You are going to be fast if you use such techniques. So once that member is there, I'll just right click. Okay. I want to apply the changes. The first one go to section and material. The section, I'll pick the first arrow, it's an eye. Then I'll go to the second arrow, of course, it's a universal beam. Then go to the third one and pick the, the, the section that I want to use. I want to use the 254, 146, 37, select on it. Go to the next one. You see that if I just, let me just drag it. Am I able to drag? Okay, while well, the window is open, I can even drag this one here. And let me just zoom in so that you see what is happening. I'm just holding the, the wheel on my mouse to, you know, to burn it like that. So you see that if I change to up, you know, it's showing that red line there to say that it will align there, but I want it to be at the center, okay, as you can see from here. So I'm happy with that. Then go to the next one, which is naming. Make sure that you set the model row. The model row is important when it comes to numbering. Make sure that you have already set the model row so that the numbering is, you know, correctly set. I want a beam as the model row, so that is the one. You can choose the list is huge, depending on what you are modeling, but this is a beam. So these are the three options that I just want to change, then close it there. So you can see that the beam is right there. Now I use this option, but now the other side, I just want to use a continuous beam because I have a number of beams there. I'll click on continuous beam, then just zoom in there, just pick that one. You see that it's jumping. This is continuous now. I can continue just picking that one there and all the way up to there you see that if i just pick the node there it will jump on top there without a problem just like that once you finish make sure that you right click or of course i just want to maintain the cell member you can go ahead and change depending on the design pick the sizes of your choice if i go to positioning it's okay the naming Okay, for the naming, even this one, I just want it to be beam. Make sure that you check these things out. Then just cancel. All the settings are there as you can see. Okay, so this is how you're going to create your beams. Now, what I want to do, I just want to deactivate this one because now it's just a matter of copying these members here and there. So I'll deactivate this one. From here, you see that it's going to tell you that it's off. So I'm happy with what i have now let me just copy the beam here on the other locations and what i'm going to use is simply maybe co on my keyboard for copy co then enter and i'll select that beam right click then of course remember i activated the nodes so it will be easy for me to to simply you know pick the nodes you can see that i just pick it from there i'll go to the other one that is the node right there i'm just 
placing it right there and right there then right click enter or cancel from the keyboard because i'm just copying i'll copy this one on the other side also co on my keyboard or i can start by selecting if i want select that one and that one then co enter then the best point i just want to copy it from that node from this point up to the other node which is that point as you can see i have the beam then you see that it's, it's still locked there i can remove the author mode if i want so that it floats like that then escape okay so that's how you create the beams the, the continuous one and you know the single span beams and also how you can copy them okay now let me also show you a different way of copying if i want i want to copy this one let me just select that one and delete it i want to show you all the possible ways of doing these things i can go to that tool there under the tools and go to you know to transform elements i'll select on it okay once you do that then make sure that you use copy as you can see from there then click on select objects i want to select this object then right click one object is selected then i'll need to check there that is in the where do i want to copy that is in the y direction okay but doesn't matter since i'll pick it from there and take it take it up to there so what i'll do that is in the y so y is here actually it doesn't matter because i'll be picking as i've mentioned just make sure that you click that smaller box there and you just want to copy it from that node up to that node then this one give you an option of you know a preview okay number of copies of course it's just one because i'm copying one then just go to preview okay you see that the you know the member is right here so this is another way of copying you see that this tool is very very powerful when you you know for array as you are going to show you in the next step so i'll just click on okay and it's applied as you can see okay now assuming that i want to have a beam maybe uh from here maybe at 1.2 intervals going in that direction okay so again you see that it's difficult to pick that point but i'm going to make use of the ucsi not to say that that is the origin and if this is the x so we are just dealing with the coordinates here okay so make sure that you understand this is the zero and you can this is the x z and y so i just want to have a beam at uh, uh, maybe 1.2 so what i need to do i'll simply click on the beam there then what i'll do is to make sure that i type 0 comma 0 comma 0 so that the beam starts from actually not 0 comma 0 what i want to specify is at x i want to have 1200 so i'll say 1200 then comma 0 comma 0 enter am i there as you can see you you know that point will act as a reference point for you to model you know start any beam from anywhere you know from any point okay so from here again what i want to do now i just want to override the the, the snap so i'll hold the shift right click and i just want to use perpendicular okay so if i move there i want perpendicular in the middle okay so as you can see it's right there okay now what i can do again is to simply copy so i'm not sure if the if the spacing is, is is the same but before i do that i can right click and now pick again the model rows and everything but you've seen how to do it i'll just cancel now i can still use maybe continuous beam and i'm just picking the node then i can go the other side let me just lock it in that direction once I lock it, then I can go to hold shift, right click. I just want perpendicular. Okay, you can see that I can pick there. Now this one is continuous, so I can go at the end, right click, perpendicular, like that. And make sure that you pick perpendicular somewhere there in the middle and click. Right click, then you can go to this box again, change the positioning, center is okay. The naming, change to beam, okay. The, the 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 section that's the one that i want i'll simply close it and you can see that i have it here now if i want to copy this you know maybe i can use an array i can use copy but array is is better let me start with copy okay but copy give you a challenge just make sure that you use array that's the easiest in this case because copy you need to be copying one by one let me show you once i select this one this one and this one okay so 
I'll say CO on my keyboard enter. You see that I'll have to copy from this point. And then let me lock it in that direction. Lock it once again. Then I can just start typing 1200 enter. But you see that. Do I have the one, two? Let me 1200 enter okay it's right here as you can see now you see that it's the reference point is the first one so i need to escape again pick this one that's why i said that you can use the different method and this is the one where we are going to use the transform elements so you can use it if you want but you need to be going back and forth to pick the other member so in this case i just want to pick you know the transform elements and i'm going to pick array okay once i pick array i'll pick select objects Okay, the objects that I want to select is this one, this one, and this one. Right click. Okay, then we see that this is X. So right here, that's where we are. Okay, then array is selected. Then I'll pick it from there. And I just want to pick from this point, the previous one, up to the members where you selected. Click there. Now, all you need to do is specify the number. For example, if I say, uh, maybe let me say three and click on preview, you see that I just have three. I, I just have three, sorry. Then if I go to modify, I can increase the number there. Maybe I want to have seven, then preview. You can see that I need to subtract one, go back to modify. Then let me say six, maybe. Then, okay, you can see that I've reached there. Oh, there's still one here. I don't want that one. Okay, I can still delete it. I've finished it. What I need to do is to simply delete. I should have just reduced the number there. So you can see that using transform elements, that too is very, very powerful. You are able to array your members just in this simple way. So thank you very much for watching. This is how you create your flow beams in advanced steel by making use of this UCS. So see you in some more tutorials.